Hello, and thank you for checking out my tutorial video on how I made the N95 rated face masks. I'm Outlaw2LK of the Paladins of Cosplay, and I hope you're safe and doing well. I want to clarify that these masks are all made from fabrics I had left over from previous projects. They are made from various types and weaves, but if you're going to use just the mask by itself, I would suggest you use tightly woven cotton for the layers within. If you can't find or don't know whether something is or isn't quote-unquote tightly woven, my tutorial will cover a pocket or a pouch layer that will allow you to insert an N95 rated filter. You can go on Amazon and find these filters, also known as PM2.5. Face mask I have here is a child's mask. It consists of three layers, but you can go with as many layers as you'd like, just as long as you can still breathe through it. I've added a standard inkjet iron-on transfer graphic to the outside layer. There are other options, of course, like textiles or printed fabrics, but if you plan on using heat-transferred vinyl, please do some research on the vinyl because I have heard that some, some of these uh, are not that good to breathe through. As for the elastic that goes around the ears, I purchased them a while back from Joann's or Michael's. Currently, they might be limited to no stock at all, so Good luck, uh, if you might be able to find it on online, if anything. You can also get them at dollar stores, but keep in mind that there is a difference in quality. I uh, used some dollar store elastic on previous masks and didn't have to use nearly as much because they stretched with ease. Definitely measure to see how much you'll need based on the quality of the elastic you have. Onto the pattern. There are a bunch of free patterns available online. I looked through a bunch of them and found features that I liked from each, so I combined and tested and tried out a couple. Uh, some of the ones had sharper angles that look really cool that you could sew them as they are, but the, with the bias tape that I was using, it, uh, it was so hard to, to do, I just abandoned it and tried a more simple pattern, and what you have here is what I ended up with. Transfer the template onto your fabrics of choice. I usually start with the outer layer first, and then you do the same to the subsequent layers within. When transferring it, you need a double layer folded over for the convenience of not having to trace and cut twice. Here you can see what little red fabric I had left over. Try to line up your template so you can utilize every square inch of that leftover fabric. A little disclaimer. If the audio doesn't appear to match the video, I originally recorded this prior to knowing how to add dubbed audio, but I watched a couple video tutorials on how to do this, so I can eliminate some of the rambling throughout the video. You can see that indicated by my random hand motions and gestures. Transferring the pattern, you can use a fabric pencil or a marker, depending on what will show up better on, the, on that particular piece of fabric. Once cut, you can tell which side is up by the curve of the mask. That's where the nose bridge meets in the center, and the side that goes to your chin will be the straight edge side. If you work with the outer layer first and you want to apply an iron-on graphic, this would be the best time to do this. 
Every brand of iron-on transfer has their own set of instructions, so follow them for best results. For this tutorial, I decided that this mask will be four layers, uh, considering that some of the material I had left over were thinner and the weave wasn't as tight, um, but I will make sure that this will have the pocket for the filter. So again, it's four layers with one la outer layer, two inner layers, and then a fourth being the pocket. For my patterns, I didn't really account for seam allowance since I'm using bias tape to lock everything in. The only seam you have to account for in this one will be the center seam. This will be based on how well you can use your sewing machine and how close to the edge you can, you can go. Or if you can't do that or if you don't have that skill, you're going to want to make sure your pattern adjusts enough for the seam allowance. Try to sew this as close to the edge as possible if you can. This layer is going to be the pocket layer. Um, I folded the outer edge inward by one inch. This will allow you to be able to access the pouch a lot more easier than if it was flush to the end. Also, when you're doing the final steps of the mask, it, the bias tape will cover up certain areas and you might forget and lose the pocket altogether. So this process or this fold will allow you to access that. Now prepare to sew the center seams by placing the outsides of the masks inward. You can sew the center seam with or without a lock stitch. It's not nearly necessarily since bias tape will be used to lock all the stitching later, but if it's a practice that you do, go ahead and do it.
This layer here is the pocket. Don't forget, you need to fold one inch at the edges and just sew it straight down. When you've trimmed all the excess thread, begin the assembly process. Start with the outside layer, then the inner layers, and then the pouch. Line up the center seam at the bridge of the nose. Once you've layered everything and everything's lined up, proceed adding the bias tape. Here you can leave a little excess at the end. This is going to be cut off when you're done sewing the top and the bottom. Don't forget to lock stitch the bias tape for added durability. Start with one side, sew, and then pause once you get to the center. Realign everything, hold everything, everything down, and adjust the layers with the bias tape, and then just continue sewing through.
After you've cut off the excess, this would be a great opportunity for you to add a wire tie or a paper clip, something that's a bendable metal. You can slide it on the inside of the bias tape, align it with the center, and this will allow you to have an adjustable nose bridge seal for just, again, it's just an option. I didn't do it for most of the masks that I did. I have tried it out on a couple, and it is pretty cool, actually. Unfortunately, I didn't think about it until just recently. Next, add the bias tape to the sides of the mask. Make sure you leave about a half an inch of excess at the ends. You will not, I, I, I'm going to specify that, you will not cut these off because you're going to use them when you fold them over and you apply the elastic. Here we have the final mask. It's comprised of four layers, including the filter pocket. This is machine washable, but don't forget to remove the filter if you have one before you do that. If you included an iron-on transfer, you may want to hand wash only, or machine wash on gentle, and then you 
hang it up to dry. Some iron-on transfers I have found in past experiments don't really handle well in the washer or the dryer, so your experience may vary. Well, there you have it. Um, hopefully it's easy to follow. Uh, I'm sure there are more easier and simple ways to make a mask, but this is the way I did it. It does provide better protection, in my opinion, because of the optional PM 2.5 filter pocket. But, uh, you know, I don't really do these videos often because I'm not really good at them. So hopefully you enjoyed this and found it helpful. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask.